Hey guys, today we're going to solve lead code number 1559, detect cycles in 2D grid. So we're given a grid of characters, just like this, and we need to find if there is a cycle where all of the cells have the same value, and the cycle length needs to be at least 4. So the way we're going to do this is recursively, through a depth-first uh, traversal of the grid. So first of all, as you know, I'd like to set up a variable tracking the directions in which we can move. For example, here we cannot move diagonally. Then we're going to set up the amount of rows and the amount of columns in our grid. And, you know, if we don't find any cycle at the end, we're just going to return a false, just like this. And also we're going to set up a visited set. So this will keep track of the cells that we have already visited so that we won't visit them again with the depth first search because that would be wasteful. Okay. so. Now we need to actually loop through all of our uh, matrix cells and start the depth first traversal from every cell. So we loop through all the rows, we loop through all the columns of the current row. And if we haven't visited the cell yet, so remember that in a set, we can't just pass in the reference of the array. We need to convert it to a native value such as a string. So I do that here. So if we haven't visited the current cell yet, then we start the depth first search. And if the depth first search will return true, that will mean that there is a cycle involving this position. So we will return true. Now, what are the parameters of our depth first search function? First of all, the current row and column, then the previous row and column, because in our depth first search, we don't want to go back to the previous row ever. And uh, so, to represent here that we have no previous cell, we just put minus one and minus one, because that's impossible. And the other parameter of our depth first search function is the current grid cell value. So we just pass in the current value of the current cell. Because remember that the cycle needs to be all with the same value inside of the cells. Okay, so now we are going to return true if this depth first search function returns true. Now we just need to implement it. So the parameters, as I was saying, are the current uh, x and y, so row and column coordinates, the previous coordinates, and the current value. So we call it here start character. OK, so now what, what we're going to do is we're going to add the current cell to our set. And remember to call join here, just, uh, just like before, or this won't work. Then we are going to say, if we don't find any cycle, just return false. So this is going to be at the end of our computations. Now we loop through all of the directions in our variable that we have set up previously. And we get all of the neighbors by doing uh, this. We set up the new x coordinate, new row coordinate, and the new column coordinates by adding to the current the respective value here. And then what we do is, if the row, the x coordinate is uh, greater or equal than zero, and if it is less than the number of rows, then it is a valid coordinate. Then we check as well for the y coordinate. It needs to be greater or equal than zero. It needs to be in, in the bounds of the grid, essentially. And then we also check if the new grid value is equal to the start chart. Because if, it, if it's not, then we don't have to do anything. We, we can't traverse the grid in that direction because the values are different. But if all of these conditions hold, then we just need to check another thing, which is the new, per, the new coordinates need to be different. At least one of the two new coordinates need to be different from the previous coordinates. And if all of these conditions hold, then we can check if we had already visited the, the new coordinates. And if we had, then we can just return true, because that would mean that we have indeed found a cycle. Because we aren't, remember that we aren't going on the previous coordinates. So the only way for this to happen is if we have looped through in some way. So there would be a cycle. And if there is, if it isn't already visited, so if these coordinates haven't already been visited, then we can just visit them. So call a DFS on them with the usual parameters. So the new x and the current x and y become the previous, the last x and y, and the same start character value. And if, it, if this depth-first search returns true, then we can return true as well. 
and that's it so i'm going to show you that this works and this solution is optimal because we go through all of the nodes of the matrix only once so i would say that this is a o of n space complexity and time complexity where n is the amount of cells in the matrix and the space space complexity comes from this visited set all right thank you and that's it for now bye